Hi guys, in this video we are going to talk about components life cycle. So every React component has a life cycle on its own, which has different stages. In fact, I would divide them into three different stages. One is mounting, uh, then you have updating, then you have unmounting. Okay. So in the mounting stage is basically when the component comes uh, inside of the DOM. Uh, so component is constructed with the given props and default state which is done in constructor method which we have discussed in the past uh, in the previous videos and then component comes into the DOM okay and then you have updating where the updates takes place when the state of a component is updated and then you have unmounting which means when the component leaves the DOM okay it's removed from the page okay so there's a very good um, uh, graph that's shown over here uh, explaining uh, the flowchart kind of thing basically uh, which explains you clearly how do these component work uh, and what are their life cycle uh, when each of these components get executed uh, components life cycle method get executed okay uh, so uh, if you check first stage is mounting second is updating and third is unmounting in the mounting okay you have constructor method uh, where your state is initialized and props is given to the component okay which we have discussed in the previous videos then you have get derived state from props method is called uh, actually this uh, this was not available earlier earlier we had component will mount okay so that has been removed now you have get derived state from props available uh, but it's important to note that uh, this method uh, is a static method which means this value will not be available inside of this method okay great so this will not be available now so this is called then the next one and then you have render method called uh, which goes ahead and renders the react elements and then react actually updates the dom and the refs uh, we will discuss refs uh, later on okay and then you have component did mount method that is called which means component did get mounted into the dom okay in the updating phase for example if you go ahead and uh, change the state using set state or if there are some new props that come in uh, into the child component for example you're passing uh, some props from parent to child then also get derived state from props will be called if you're setting the state if you're changing the initial state using set state method that then also you will have get derived state from props is called or if you try to force update uh, a component using force update method uh, even then you get derived state from props is called uh, if it if you feel that this is too much for you too much information you don't understand how this all work don't worry you know this is just an overview of what are the component lifecycle methods and um, so with uh, the information that you're going to gain and I will give you all different examples which will make things very clear and simple for you okay so then you have the should component updates there will be times then where you don't want to update a component uh, in that case you have a should component update lifecycle method available uh, so if you return false out of should component update method then your component will not be updated okay uh, then after this render method is called so if you're calling should component update and returning it uh, its value as false then it will not call the render method Render method will not be called that's why you see a crossover here but if this function doesn't exist in your uh, component then render method will be called during an update okay then you also have an option of uh, calling the get snapshot before update so this is the last uh, method it provides you before react updates the DOM and refs so it gives you an opportunity to do if that if you want to change something just before react updates the DOM and the information is rendered on the UI you can do that in get get snapshot before update method and then you this get uh, sorry component did update method is called after that once the component is update okay and the last one is component will unmount okay so when the component component leaves the DOM uh, that's when the component will unmount be called okay so let's go ahead and uh, uh, discuss these methods I think what we have already discussed is constructor method in the previous uh, video so just to recap on that so constructor method overrides the constructor of react uh, dot component 
class uh, it is required only when we initialize state or bind methods so if you are using an ES5 function if you're not using arrow function if you want to bind the value of this that's when you can use a constructor method or if you want to initialize state that's when you'll use it otherwise you don't need to use a constructor method it is not necessary that you have to have a constructor method into your component it's only when you initialize state or bind methods is when you require it or if you want to use this dot props in your class components uh, then you require it. For functional component you don't require a constructor because props is anyways available you can directly access that. Okay. Next up is that you can call super props before any other statement which means that if you're defining constructor you need to call super method with props as its parameter otherwise you won't get this dot props available inside of your class based component. Okay so also do not call set state inside of it because the constructor method is the place where you initialize the state you don't set state here okay so now let's take an example of a constructor method and then we'll also take example of other lifecycle method as well